The Suicide Brothers is about how fate will work so hard to convince you that he's your friend and then the moment you trust him he'll spit in your drink. Uh, it follows all the sort of rules of a cautionary tale where you have the uh, main characters and the, the warning right away what, what they want to do and they're sort of told not to do it, reminded not to do it and of course at some point they finally pull it off and then they usually and then die. The most dire consequences for pulling it off. Yeah. There's a large side of the tone that's very much about Rupert and Tom and their sense of humor, and it sort of sits in a strange fairy tale pastiche. When we first met Rupert, when he was in the Liberty, Rupert said, "Hey, I got this short that I want you guys to look at," and asked us if we wanted to direct it, and we said, "Yeah, it was right up our alley." Lederhosen, uh, super stiff hairstyles. I don't think we both thought we'd look good in Lederhosen. I have nice calves. I, I like that, that there is, the characters have their own little strange individualities, even though they've seen two sides of the same coin. Fleur, who was the designer, had lots of really good ideas about how to make it work. Particularly with, with Kira, with her fairy, to have the whole thing slightly off kilter looking. We did want to draw on sort of cl the classical fairy a bit. We wanted her to feel a bit wild and, and pixie-ish. We wanted the whole idea behind her was just about being really alive, and really part of nature. So she she draws on the nature around them, with these sort of woods that this this cottage is found in. So she has a lot of the actual foliage foliage from the area like in her hair. She feels like what should be the life of this area, whereas in, co in contrast to the Suicide Brothers' quest for death. What we wanted was a, an animated look to the fairy, or, or, or an otherworldly look to the fairy, to her movements. We faked a pixelated look, where basically we, she would perform all her movements at half speed, and then the ideas in post we speed it up so that all those labored movements are quick movements and a little it looks a little bit more insect like Rupert and Kira came up with uh, with this technique where he'd slowly say the interior dialogue and she would move to it slowly that way she wasn't thinking about her movements more she felt a bit more like a dance yeah working with the Brownlee brothers is incredible you know that whatever they're saying the other one would have said exactly the same thing they're very clever like that when everyone's ganging up on you it's good to have someone else. Yeah, it's good to do bad cop. You go back to back yeah. and just bad cop, good cop. One guy punches high, the other one kicks low, and just fucking do it up. Yeah, no one, no one can come up behind you. And, uh, Not unless they want to punch in the face. They have a very good vision. They know what they want and they know how to get it. It's just such a shame that they're Canadian. There was a writer's strike. And I think that just left a lot of crew members, the best crew members, available to work for a week. It's amazing how many people would have a week off and decide if they're going to work. He didn't have anyone that was wanting more attention than anyone else. Everyone just wanted to help. Yeah, attention. the crew was magical. They're such, such good people, because there was a lot of pressure. Uh, you get the feeling that the art department stayed quite a few late nights and maybe even slept in the studio or whatever. Yeah, it's amazing. Really good guys. I Everyone was great. Everyone stayed longer. It was good hard work. Everyone was just pulled up their sleeves and worked hard. Proper filmmaker. Had a bit of a laugh at the same time. Really good. Such a good experience for us. Richard Vandenberg was the creator of the special effects that we had. The wings that the fairy had. But Richard and his guys would constantly come up with an amazing surprise for us. Like, how do you cough up a heart? These hearts, you could screw them up so that they fit in your mouth. But as they're coming out, they kind of expand into their proper size so our faces could be distorted. And I burst lots of blood vessels in my face during that scene. And 
I, my eye bled. This is a musical piece. It's like in the tradition of sort of the old Warner Brothers cartoons and stuff. Rupert and Tom came up with this dance that's sort of loosely based on the Bavarian the the jealousy, jealousy the jealousy dance. It was the idea of um, the monotony of the afterlife, that ironically, once they've escaped the monotony of life, now they're stuck in this monotony of the afterlife, but there's not even anything to do, there's not even eating to do, so they just have this silly dance to do. But how do you fill up time? How do you fill up eternity? So just purgatory, just this endless, endless void where we've, we've done this dance and then there's nothing forever. I, I quite like Labour So I'm happy with the film.